So we, we uh, had a day off yesterday, then a heavy practice today, and um, we'll be heavy uh, the next uh, two or three days, and then another day off. And then we start to get into somewhat of a tapered down schedule with the guys. Um, they're working really hard. I'm enjoying the coaching. Um, not, not really anything to say up front different than what it was last time. Um, guys are still competing and working hard. Have you guys had a scrimmage this fall? If so, what did you learn from your team from it? Well, we, we had a, about a 110 play scrimmage, and uh, guys played hard. Uh, uh, we got some, some quality contact, and, and fortunately, we stayed healthy. That's always the issue. You worry about that. But we turned them loose and let them play, and we got some really good work. When, when was that? Uh, Sunday. Sunday. What, what have you seen out of uh, Drew Brown the last couple of weeks? He continues to get better through reps. Uh, they, they get each, each one of those guys get a little better every day. They get really good grades and, and uh, technique and, and assignment and effort. And uh, they just continue to get better every day. At what point in that, in that process does the concern of, of splitting reps not be guys start to become concerned? It started last spring. <laughs> and it doesn't go away for, for me, but uh, it, you know, I and Sean's opinion had to change. If you clearly have a player, it's better to have you playing. If not, you have to play both guys. History tells you that you're going to end up playing both of them anyway. I think it's one out of the last seven years that we've played one quarterback the entire year. That was last year, maybe. Uh, well, Mason made it through his last year, didn't he? Yeah. So it was two or seven years. Mason played with a broken rib one game and something else. But for the most part, you're probably going to need both of them at some point. Sports teams really don't even more use two quarterbacks by design, unless it's a short yardage situation like the JW. Why do you think that fell out of fashion? Why don't, why don't teams do it anymore? It used to be fairly common. Reps, just like what uh, Scott brought up. You just don't have enough reps to go around. We don't practice as many many plays as we used to because we, these guys are such finely tuned athletes and they play so fast all the time. They're, for us anyway, it's limited. Uh, you know, the only time we've ever done it is if we're using short yardage high, with the exception of uh, Chell from JW that one year because we didn't have a clue who would be the best player. Can you characterize anything you saw out of them that stood out in the scrimmage from the two guys? Or was it? They, they're really both getting better. I mean, they really are. They're understanding the offense. They're making plays. Everybody knows, for me, you have to take care of the football. And you have to be able to distribute and run our offense in a very up-tempo style. And both of them are getting a little bit better every day. I know you've been excited about Coach Dickey, his influence on the offensive line. I know you're excited about your running backs. Is the running game still progressing and looking like it might be what you want it to be? You're doing a good job running the ball. I like Coach. I like his. Uh, we, we, we hit a gold mine with him in the transition of being as smooth as it is, and with him adapting to our culture here. Coaching at Oklahoma State is a little different than other places, and so sometimes the adjustments may be not as easy as what other people think or what people do think. And so Coach has been a real smooth transition for our team. How did the defensive line hold up? How are they holding They're up? They're doing good. We're playing six to seven guys, they're all rotating in. I, wouldn't, I couldn't even tell you who was. There's not enough difference to say one guy's getting more reps than the other. I'm getting bad at looking at that. Well, we, we have LD that's playing, and we have Jeter. And, uh, Jeter. Jeter got a little bit of an ankle. He'll be out a day or two. He'll be fine. Uh, and then uh, Dez Jackson will be back um, first of next week, full speed. And then, um, uh, then we just have freshmen on those guys. How much does it help Dez? Even though he hadn't been able to go full, he's out there in full pads and he runs through everything. He gets, you know, he gets to, to run through the plays. Not sure. The, the issue you have with a running back is not taking hits, not taking any hits. So he has to be able to hold on. I think the mental aspect of, of his development is good, but he, he, he had been hit because of that uh, that little uh, fracture, or not fracture, uh, hairline uh, stress fracture he had. So that's the only thing we don't know. Can you just imagine one of the freshman running back kind of at that number three, just how deep you have it right now? Is it just like, see that being 
Maybe not this year. We, we are pretty fortunate. We've been fortunate the last several years with uh, depth in that position, so we might not have enough. We talked about the disadvantage in the one teams don't play with two quarterbacks, but you clearly could be doing that early in the year. Is there an advantage to it? I mean, does it keep the opponents off balance in if preparation? If it's not a short yardage time? Right. I don't think so, you know. These two guys are kind of the same. So if you had two guys and one was uh, like Mason Rudolph and then one was uh, was a runner, you know. They did. Yeah. Then it's a little different game for you guys. Like if he comes in, you got to be ready for this. If he's in, you don't have to be ready for this, but you kind of have to be ready for that. So I don't really think it's much of an advantage, in my opinion. That, you know, defensive coaches, they tell you differently. You know, it's Shim Knoll's second year here. What are some of the things that you've seen him do different coaching-wise compared to his first year? Uh, we're, we're running the same scheme. I mean, we haven't changed anything. And we're, I think he's just uh, – he has a better feel for uh, the – and I'm becoming repetitive here, but the, the, the play callers in this league's uh, desire to score every play, not every possession. They're trying to score every play. And I tell guys that they don't get it until they get here. So I think he understands that probably has a better feel for it. Our schemes weren't the issue last year. It was just our accountability and the discipline and, and managing the teams that we were playing. So hopefully we're better at that this time. With having two wide or excuse me, two quarterbacks battling with one another, how have your wideouts been able to grow getting you know passes from two different QBs at the same time? You know they're doing good. I don't really think that's much of a factor either. Uh, you could probably ask them after a rep if they knew who threw that they probably wouldn't why would he know them through the wall? Because they're just they're so tied into what, what their responsibility is and who they're trying to defeat in coverage, man or zone, and trying to get open and then make the play. I don't think it really factors in those. Coach Gundy, what kind of growth have you seen in Mike Scott and what do you expect his well-being? Mike's doing better. Mike is uh is maturing. Now his body's changed completely as you guys can tell by looking at him. But um, Mike had a little blonde in him. And uh, he's starting to get some of that out of him and get a little more serious about football. And I had a, uh, I had a scout ask me uh, the other day what kind of year that I thought he would have. And I said, he may end up with, with four tackles and one sack, or he might have eight sacks and 60 tackles. I, I'm not sure what he'll do right now. So he was scouting for the youth league over there in uh, East Side of Tulsa. Tracy Wallace, Noel, and Martin. What are some of the things they've seen do off the field? Maybe like help younger players. Tracy? Yeah. Well, Coach, coach Dunn's guys have to coach the younger guys. Every guy that comes through here. Once you've been here two years, you're responsible for coaching the guys in your position, and that's what he's doing now. Tracy, I mean, uh, Tylen, you're talking about Tracy or Tyler? Tracy. Oh, uh, oh, he's working with all of them. Yeah, he's student coach. Yeah, and uh, he's doing the same thing our players are. Uh, he wants to get in this business, and so he's, he's helping our guys coach. He's, he's a great young man and very knowledgeable. Did you have great overall talent, or is that compared to five years ago, 10 years ago, 15 years ago? Oh, I, I don't know that. Uh, there's guys that's interesting this year. You got like Mike Scott and Heyman and Parker and. Uh, how Chuba plays, uh, the guys behind Wallace and Stoner, some of the D linemen. It'd be a lot easier to tell in about six weeks, but our overall talent from top to bottom in the program is just as good as it always has been. We're just in a little run this year where most of them are a little younger than the others. So, for example, I think at this time next year, or the next year, we'll be really excited about our defense because all of them are back for two or three years. Right now they're young. Uh, it's probably the best illustration I can give you. Same thing at quarterback. We've got inexperienced guys, and I think they're both good players, but we don't know. Who's going to ask you making the list of your top 150 players ever? Of course, it's a crazy subjective list, but when I went and did it, I had a whole bunch of guys on that list. The easy picks in 08, 09, 10, 11, 12. Blackman, Wheaton, not just those guys, but a whole bunch of guys who played with them. And my question is, have you been able to sustain that kind of talent 
yeah. in the succeeding year. You know, you know what? I, sometimes I wanted the same thing, but I looked the other day. They they handed me the uh, the NFL roster update on what guys did. There are 27 guys that are active in the NFL now. Yeah, that's a bunch of guys, and so I didn't realize that. Somebody would say, "Hey, how many guys you got? Think you got in the NFL?" I said 15, but uh, maybe you know, maybe four or five of those guys get cut now. But we could very well have over 20 guys playing in the NFL this year. That's a pretty good number for Oklahoma State. In fact, that would be a good study for somebody to do is to look and see what's the most active players we've had in the NFL ever at this university. And I don't know that it'll be over 20. Maybe it will. I don't know. Some of you guys might know. I, I, I don't keep up with that. I just keep up with the players. So when I looked at that, I thought, you know, there's quite a few guys that are that can actually make NFL rosters, uh, and and that means that you know we're we're doing okay. I'll do it this week. Yeah, it'd be interesting. It'd be a good study. It'd be easy to do. Yeah, just look and see, and how many. You know, there's two ways to do it now. So for us, if you're on an active roster, and then if you're a practice player, you know they make good money. And they're right there. It means you could get activated instantly. Like we had a couple guys last year that did that. Um, so if, if you get to that point, you're making pretty good money. You're right there on the cusp. And if you're active, and I would say that right now could be the highest number that we've had in a long time around. Of course, it doesn't matter if they're active. Anybody's on the practice squad, it's pretty good. Who's a good player for you? So good player. You'll That's take exactly those right. guys anytime. Yeah. But if you're going to do the, you know, and being fair and counting the numbers, they probably got to say these guys are active. That way, it's a fair number for where you're at. But anybody that gets to the last cut or is even on a practice squad, they're pretty dang good. Looks pretty good, dang good player. On the O line between Dylan Galloway and Bryce, has there been one of them who's reached out more to you? Or how do you expect Galloway and who? Um, Bryce. Oh, Bryce? Yes. Yeah, uh, both of them are doing good. Galloway's a little further ahead because he played in a lot of big games. Um, he was an interesting player last year because when he got in and played, um, somebody got hurt. When he got in and played, he played better than he had always practiced, which was a good thing. And then he missed the spring, and he's back out there now. And he seems to be doing uh, good, and then so is Bright. He's also coming along, not as far along because he didn't play in games last year. But he's going to be a player here eventually. He's probably going to probably gonna start for three years. Who do you expect to win that not starting to talk about Who do I expect it? Uh, between those two? Gosh, I don't know. You'd have to ask Coach Dickey. Man, I, I don't want to get ahead of the, uh, the park there. Man. 